The modern motorist expects a lot from his car. High performance, smooth, comfortable ride, elegant styling, and good old British engineering. Looking back 40 years, some of those cars may not seem to possess all those qualities. But today's models are impressive compromises between what's desirable and what's practical. Cars are faster and lighter than they used to be, and the specifications have improved enormously as technology and design have streaked ahead. Customers demand a lot, and they get it. But every silver lining has its cloud, and ironically, it's just these advances which have created the industry-wide increase in customer complaints about brake judder. In the good old days, your average motorist wasn't aware of such details as judder. There were so many rattles, groans and crunches to contend with that the odd brake judder would go almost unnoticed. But increasing sophistication in design, the use of modern materials and the need for tighter tolerances in fitment have actually increased the occurrence of brake judder. This has put an added responsibility on those who repair and maintain today's vehicles. It means that technicians must stick rigidly to all the manufacturer's recommendations, using the correct equipment and methods for every single job. Take the replacement of front brake discs, for example. A typical scenario works like this. A motorist goes to his local garage. The garage may fit the parts without sticking rigidly to the manufacturer's recommended fitting and testing procedures. The mechanic takes the car out on a short test drive before handing it back to the customer. And in the majority of cases, everything will seem fine. Until, a few thousand miles later, the motorist brings the car back, complaining of violent brake judder. The result is a dissatisfied customer, when with a little more care on fitment, the problem could have been avoided. It's normal for the garage to assume the cause to be faulty manufacture, and send the discs back for a claim under warranty. And yes, a thick, thin problem is confirmed. The question is, how did it occur? Well, it could be one of three causes. Quality, fitting of the parts, or the design and manufacture process of the vehicle. Unipart buys from one of the best suppliers in the world the largest aftermarket manufacturer, producing 8 to 10 million parts every year. Their sophisticated manufacturing processes and scrupulous quality control have reduced manufacturing faults to an absolute minimum. So quality and manufacture are unlikely to be the problem. In fact, tolerances of unipart discs are tighter in many cases than the original manufacturer's specifications. We now manufacture our brake discs, both in terms of the original machining and in the final assembly, to very, very close tolerances. In fact, we actually work to microns in some aspects of those assembly processes. The discs from Unipart are sourced from exactly the same manufacturing processes and are therefore maintained to exactly the same quality standards. Where it differs in a workshop is obviously the, in the assembly of the disc. And it is vital for our dealers to replicate the same levels of detail in assembly of the disc to the vehicle as we do in the manufacturing. If we don't do that, we know from experience that the customers will suffer problems with the disc later. Unipart assesses every warranty claim on its individual merits. But the main cause of uneven disc wear tends to be due not to faulty manufacture of parts, but to poor adherence to vehicle manufacturers' instructions when fitting brake discs. When a disc is fitted out of true in relation to the hubs, the pads won't remain in full contact with the disc at constant pressure all the time. They'll actually skim the disc at various points, wearing it in localized areas and causing disc thickness variation or DTV, which is the main cause of brake judder and excessive pedal travel. On older cars, 35 microns of DTV would cause no noticeable vibration. But a modern car will suffer brake judder with DTV as low as 15 microns. Why? 
Well, many of the design improvements over the last 30 years, such as suspension, ride and road handling, have conspired to make more recent models much less forgiving of runout and DTV. But suspension systems and body shell designs have come a long way in 30 years, resulting in wheels which are more enclosed and flush with the body of the car. This has meant that there is actually less space for the brake caliper. The result has been the gradual replacement of the piston-opposed caliper design used in older models by the single-opposed piston caliper, which is slimmer and much more sensitive to run-out. So instead of the specified run-out of 3 thou, equivalent to about 70 microns, demanded in this 1965 workshop manual, manufacturers are now demanding 20 to 40 microns. So fitting discs has become a much more painstaking task, and even minute errors can result in the judder bug appearing. Sometimes brake judder is attributed to the friction materials used, but there's no evidence from tests carried out that unipart friction materials contribute to judder any more or less than others. It's true that when we first changed from asbestos to non-asbestos pads, the new materials gained a bad reputation for noise and harshness. But the latest materials used by all Uniparts manufacturers have gone far beyond the friction properties and refinements achieved by asbestos before the change. And the friction characteristics of our pads and shoes are designed to be within 15% of the OEM parts in performance. So it's really the fitting of the discs which needs attention to avoid the problem. Changing the front discs is actually quite simple, and it should be possible to do it within the ICME time, including the dial indicator check. Firstly, remove the road wheel and the caliper housing. When you've taken off the old disc, the hub and the surrounding area will be pretty filthy, so you'll need to clean it first by using a wire brush, then an emery cloth. Finally, using Uniparts brake cleaner, make sure you've eliminated all traces of corrosion and dirt. The tiniest piece left on the hub can put the disc sufficiently out of true so as to cause excessive runout on fitment and therefore generate DTV within a few thousand miles. When you're absolutely sure the hub and surrounding area are thoroughly clean, offer up the disc. To achieve an accurate run-out reading, bolt the special dial indicator gauge fitting bracket through the caliper bolt hole. Position the gauge so that you can read it when the disc is turned. Never mount the dial indicator on a freestanding jig as it could move independently of the car and the result would be an inaccurate reading. In some cases, as with the Rover 800, the road wheel should be replaced before testing and the nuts tightened in the correct order using a torque wrench set to the manufacturer's recommended setting. Don't be tempted to use an air ratchet gun to tighten the wheel nuts. Over tightening may distort the hub or disc and that will give you a false reading. On a vehicle where it isn't possible to take readings with the road wheel on, hold the disc securely in place using suitable washers and wheel nuts. Now you're ready to use the dial indicator. Set it to zero and on front wheel drive vehicles it's recommended that you get a colleague to turn the road wheel on the opposite side to the one you're working on while you take the reading. This is because it's possible to distort the reading when you turn the road wheel on the side you're fitting. If the dial indicator reading is in excess of the tolerances laid down by the manufacturer in the workshop manual, take the disc off and revolve it either by quarter turns or by 180 degrees, depending on the make and model. The position showing the smallest tolerance reading should be the one in which the disc is fitted provided it's within the permitted tolerances quoted in the workshop manual for the vehicle. 
If it's not within the acceptable tolerance specification, don't assume there's a manufacturing fault with the disc. The root cause must be established by checking that the hub is not distorted and that the flange is free of rust, burrs and dirt. Clean it again if necessary and then take further run-out readings. When you have a run-out reading within the specified tolerances, bolt back the caliper housing, replace the brake pads and the road wheel, tightening the nuts to the correct torque wrench setting. Unipart discs are sold in matched production batch pairs, so always replace discs in offside near side pairs. We'd also recommend that new brake pads are fitted. You'll find Unipart provide technical support for their products in the form of catalogues, printed guides, technical bulletins and engineering support in the field. We can also provide technical training and seminars. Brake discs are a growth area in the brakes friction market and Unipart offers the best available. Together with the brakes hydraulics range, Unipart is a truly one-stop shop for the highest quality brake parts. Working together with our customers to eliminate runout, we can return to the days when the judderbug never appeared.